Oh, hello, friends. Thanks for joining me. Today I'll be taking you on a journey with me in a very special holiday series. Thanks to my friends at Carhartt. Everybody knows that a homemade holiday gift is that much more special, and there's still time to pull it off. So in this series, I'm going to show you how you can build a homemade holiday gift, regardless of your skill set, as I cover things from the very simple to the very challenging. So without further ado, welcome to a very merry homemade holiday. So for this first project, we're going to start about as simple as it gets, and I'm going to show you how you can create five unique and beautiful candle holders using a variety of materials. So let's get started with the first one. We're just going to utilize some birch rounds that you can pick up for a couple bucks from your local craft store. And then we're going to use an inch and a half Forstner bit on our drill to create some indentations for our candles. And then we're going to stack them in a unique pattern and glue them all together. Now I'm using CA glue because it works quickly but you could also use just typical wood glue. And once you have it all glued up, you can just hit it with a couple coats of finish and you are finished with this project. So that's a super simple, bare bones DIY task that you can tackle on your own. Doesn't take very many tools, so it's super easy to do. And the next one also doesn't take that many tools. We're gonna utilize some epoxy and a piece of wood. So to get started with this one, I'm actually using a four inch Fernco coupling, which you can find at your local big box store in the plumbing section. This works great because it's just a round rubber mold that you can then apply some mold release paste wax to if you need to, you may not even need to, but then you just mix up some epoxy in whichever color combination you want. In this case, I'm using a black and a pearl white. And then once it's all mixed together, you can just pour it into the mold. I'm trying to keep it around 50-50 mixture just because that's kind of what I'm going for, but you could go for whatever you wanted to do. And then once you have it poured in, you can just hit it quickly with the blowtorch to release the bubbles. And then I'm swirling it up to create kind of a marbled look, but you could also change it up and do whatever pattern you want. After about an hour, I released it from the mold. It popped right out, so super easy. Now you could just touch this up by sanding it, but I decided I wanted to add a little bit more to it. So I took my four inch hole saw and cut a piece of scrap walnut that I had lying around. And then I sanded it down mixed up some more epoxy, and then glued the two pieces together. Then I sanded it down so it was nice and smooth, and then I hit it with a couple coats of satin finish. I love the marbled look of this candle holder, and you can create any kind of array or color scheme that you want using this epoxy, and it gives you a really unique and personalized gift. For our next candle holder, we're just gonna use some plywood. Now the nicer the plywood you use, the nicer the candle holder you're gonna get is gonna be. But if you use a piece of plywood like a Baltic birch or something similar, you'll get something really nice by cutting a bunch of rounds with a hole saw. In this case, I'm using a two and a half inch hole saw. And then you can stack them on top of each other, glue them together and make them as big as you want. It can be a little tricky to keep them from sliding around when you're gluing them together. So I recommend that you use a drill bit that's the same diameter as the pilot on your hole saw and then you can keep everything all lined up. Once the glue is dried, you can just sand everything down smooth, and then using an inch and a half Forstner bit, you can create an inset for a tea light candle. Lastly, all it takes is adding some finish, and then I recommend that you make two or three of these at varying heights so that you can have a cool set to give as a gift. So that's a really simple project that you can do with minimal materials and minimal tools. This one might be my favorite of all of them. It utilizes just some simple components from the plumbing section of the big box store and a piece of wood. To get started, first I'm cutting a couple small lengths of pipe using a pipe cutter to create a little horseshoe shape. Then I lay it out on the piece of wood and measure it so that I can figure out where I need to drill my holes. Then I can use a Forstner bit to drill the corresponding holes in the wood. And then from there, I just feed it through the piece of wood and then measure and mark the same thing on the other side. And then once I have both pieces fed through the wood, I can flip the thing over and then measure and cut the long pieces that are gonna act as the legs. From there, I grabbed a couple small mason jars and laid them out so they're equally spaced and found a corresponding hole saw that was roughly the same diameter. And then I drilled out those holes. 
Finally, I sanded everything down and then added a few coats of finish, and this one was all wrapped up. So I love the way that one came out. And lastly, the most difficult one utilizes concrete and some brass fittings from the plumbing section. Now this one didn't come out exactly as I planned, but I still love the look of it. So let's dive into it. To start with this one, I created a box that would act as the form to hold the cement out of some small pieces of plywood that I had lying around. Now you might need a table saw to rip these to the right width, or you could always use a circular saw or some kind of combination. Just depends on what kind of tools that you have. For the inside of the box, I'm lining it with some thin melamine, and you'll see why I'm using the thin stuff later. You could actually make the form out of the thicker melamine you can get at the big box store if you want to. And I have some other videos on how to build a concrete form and some stuff that I've done in the past, which you're free to check out. I decided I wanted to give this thing a little bit of an interesting shape, so I cut a couple of the thin pieces a little bit long and then bent them to fit inside the form, which gave the whole thing kind of an hourglass shape. And then I sealed all the edges and seams with some silicone. From there, I grabbed a cement mix from my local hardware store, and then I decided I wanted to make this thing a little fun, and I added some cement dye to the mixture to create some black cement. Then I just troweled it into the mold and filled it about halfway up. So I wanted to make something a little bit fun here, so I ended up going with a two-tone scheme and only mixed about half the mixture with the black cement and then left the other the regular color. It didn't really end up working out like I thought it would, but it was worth a shot anyway. From there, I vibrated the mold a little bit to get out some of the bubbles, and then I let it set up for about eight hours before I popped it out of the mold. Now this is where I screwed things up. Now my thought process was that if I waited till it got set up enough, but was still soft, I could inset these copper fittings, which are just basic plumbing reducers, from an inch and a half down to three quarters of an inch, and it worked out fine until I let it set up overnight, and then cracks began to form from where I put it in, so I had to use some epoxy to seal the cracks. There wasn't really much I could do to hide the epoxy, so I ended up just sanding down the whole thing to give it more of a rough texture, where originally I thought it was going to be really smooth. But it ended up looking fine once I put the concrete sealer on it, even though you can't really tell that it was supposed to be a two-tone look. So although it didn't come out the way that I thought it would, I still think it's pretty cool. It's got kind of a modern gothic vibe to it or something like that. And I'd still be happy to give it as a gift to the right person. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you liked this series. Make sure you guys subscribe and follow along as I release new videos every week that are gonna ratchet up in difficulty as I go, showing you a variety of different skill sets and projects that you can tackle. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.